The Calgary Stampeders have known stability at the quarterback position, but you have to go back. The passing of Peter Lisk and the all-round talents of Jerry Keeling made the stamp successful in the 1960s and the early 1970s. In the 80s, though, more than a dozen quarterbacks have gone through Calgary. Rick Johnson, two years ago, looked like the answer, but he was injured last year and quit this year. Handing the reins to Rick Warman, who had some very productive games in a Calgary uniform, but obviously not enough for Coach Larry Kuharich because Warman was let go this week. And now it's Eric Kramer, a 23-year-old North Carolina State product who makes his first CFL start today in Regina. And his is a face Coach Kuharich hopes CFL fans will be looking at for a long time. Eric Kramer leads the Stampeders against the Rough Riders today on CFN. Network. Today's game from Taylor Field in Regina is brought to you by Carling O'Keefe, Brewers of Foster's Lager, Petro Canada Dealers and Agents, our energy is Canada, and Priority Post, EMS Courier, your better business connection in Canada and around the world. Today's head coaches have contrasting styles. Calgary's Larry Q. Harich is a New York native who loves to gamble and wears his emotions on his sleeve. Saskatchewan's John Gregory is from Webster City, Iowa. He's more conservative and more reserved. And Saskatchewan offensive lineman Bob Poley has played for both. Well, you know, uh, coming here with Coach Gregory, he's a sort of a calm, cool individual. Uh, nothing seems to upset him too much, you know. Uh, he wants to win, and, uh, you know, he knows how to prepare the guys. And I think uh, for individual-wise, he knows how to treat the guys. And... Uh, as to Larry, uh, Larry's more intense, uh, you know, upbeat type of coach, and, uh, you know, he wants to win real bad, too, and, uh, but uh, the, the way he goes about things and uh, the way he uh, gets it across sometimes is a little questionable, but uh, basically one's more intense than the other, and, uh, you know, being with both of them, uh, I'd have to say Larry is a little more intense. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our CFN telecast from Taylor Field in Regina. Neil Emson, some very frank comments by Bob Poley about the two head coaches today, very different individuals who have handled their teams this year in very different ways. Looking at John Gregory and the Riders, they started last year building a football team and have stayed with the same personnel. It has paid off. There's been more turmoil in the Stampeder camp, and I think that comes from Kaharich looking for players. He doesn't believe he has the right mix yet. He continues to look. Kaharich excited, Neil, about the return of linebacker Kenny Ford, and rightly so, an interesting linebacking trio. Well, Kenny Ford's return will add an awful lot to this defense. Not only his abilities, but it moves Landry back inside. And I think you're going to see an awfully active group of, group of linebackers trying to get to Austin in a lot of different ways. Unquestionably, the Stamps need a big defensive effort today. They also need production from newcomer Eric Kramer. He'll start at quarterback, and he has some thoughts on his first start in the CFL. Well, from what I've seen in the film and uh, what uh, Coach Kuharik says, it's uh, Saskatchewan's got a good defense, and we're going to have to keep the ball uh, in our possession, move the sticks down the field, and get some points, keep our defense off the field. Eric Kramer's 5-8 and eight Stampeders against 8-5 and five Saskatchewan, coming up on CFN. The in fact that Jeff Fairholm will hold the football for Dave Ridgway, of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders as Ridgeway kicks off and we are underway. Andy McVeigh at the Calgary 3 drops the ball. It goes in the end zone. And he'll lose valuable yardage on the potential in that return getting back to the 15-yard line. So the Stampeders working into the wind will start deep in their own end. A 77-yard kickoff by Ridgeway. Brought back 17 yards by McVeigh. Eric Kramer playing his second only CFL game, Neil Lumsden, and a lot of pressure on his shoulders today. There is, and I think John Gregory would like to put even more. I asked him earlier if he was going to try to confuse him. Earlier on in the game, he said, no, our defense will sit back and see what he wants to try to accomplish first. Huge game for the Stampeders in their quest for a playoff spot. Petros carrying on first down, has five yards. Up near the 20, loses the ball. But they had whistled the play dead, I believe. 
It is an unseasonably mild day, 19 Celsius. The wind from the north at 31. You can see by the attire how warm it is. And uh, no hint of any rain at all here in the Regina area. This time last year, Bob, it was minus one degree Celsius with a trace of snow. So quite a contrast. One extreme to the other. While there was a fumble and the ball advanced, Calgary recovered, so they're second in a couple. Petros carrying, and he has stopped for no gain. Maybe a slight loss. Gary Lewis got through to make first contact with Tim Petros. Saskatchewan front seven. I keep wanting to refer to them as the front four, thinking of only the down linemen. But watch the pursuit and how they go to the football. Bob Jurison meets the block, but Lewis coming down, Albright coming in. That's going to the football, and that's what John Gregory has taught his defense, maybe more specifically Ted Heath in that defensive group. Actually, they gave Petros a yard gain on that. It's third down, about a yard and a half for the Stampeders at their 24. They thought about going for it, but Glenn Harper and the punting team are on the field. Harper kicking into the wind, low snap, and he gets a low kick away. Joe Fuller, the only rider back, picks it up at the 49, gets away from one. There's a flag down. That'll likely be no yards against the Stampeders. So Saskatchewan will have excellent field position with the football for the first time in the game. No yards. Calgary number 44. First down, Saskatchewan. Joe DeForest, who's in the long snaps and a backup linebacker. This is the third meeting of the season between these two teams. The Stamps won the first one, 48-10 in Calgary. And then Kent Austin came off the bench to lead the Riders to a 24-21 win here at Taylor Field. That happened back in August. Austin on first down, throws, and it's caught down at the 32-yard line against very tight coverage by Don Narcisse. Kent Austin. Well, I don't think you can get any tighter coverage. If Narcisse can catch the football under this situation, he should be able to catch it under any situation. He's going to push Chris Major off. Ball's a little bit high, but hey, Major's all over him. Watch Austin. He's going to get a chance to get a good look at the field. Looking down, decides to go to the outside. And even when they get close, Roger Aldag puts him on his back. All kinds of time for Austin, who hands off to Tim McCray on first down from the Stampeder 31. And McCray gets maybe three into the Calgary 28-yard line. Well, the linebackers of the Stampeders will have a little bit more luck if Larry Harris's front four of Williams, Mitchell Price, Belvo, and Laird can do a good job of keeping the offensive linemen from getting through and getting a, a helmet or shoulder pads on the linebackers to take them out of the play. Second and seven riders at the Calgary 28. Ray Elgard has been Austin's favorite receiver on this play most of the season, but he's going outside the Narcisse and he drops the football, very catchable ball, at the Calgary 15-yard line. You know, in the last two games, Neil, the Riders have only completed eight passes to their wide receivers. That's Narcisse and McDonald combined for 100 yards. Looks like they're making an effort to use those wide people more here in the early going. I think you have to to try to spread that defense as wide as you can get it and then maybe work back into guys like Fairholm, Elgard, or the running backs. Dave Ridgeway. Well, try a field goal from 35 yards with the win. Suter holding. Had a little trouble with the snap, but got it down. And Ridgeway put it through. And that's a very usual sight. And the Rough Riders have scored first here at Taylor Field. Consummate field goal kicker was now becomes 40 out of 46. Maybe a more important statistic than that is his wife Nancy gave birth to a baby boy last week. Well, and Ridgeway celebrated here early at 3.05 of the first quarter. Neil, a 35-yard field goal. The Rough Riders getting some points early with the win. Kramer screening with penalty flags down to Tim Petros. And Petros has a good run up to the 50, a gain of 15 yards for the Stampeders. But there is a penalty. Offside, Saskatchewan, decline, first down Calgary. So the good gain to Petros on the screen will stand as Eric Kramer moves the Stampeders out to their 49-yard line. And working into the wind, Stamps will look for that kind of play to keep the ball away from the Rough Riders and Dave Ridgeway. Kramer gets some time and throws complete. 
Larry Willis or Emmanuel Colbert, pardon me, and he makes a couple of nice moves and then fumbles the ball at the 43 of Saskatchewan, but the Stampeders, Tim Petros, got it back. I think we got an idea of how strong an arm Kramer has. That's an awfully long out, and he's throwing that against the breeze, so if the ball wasn't out there with some zip, it would be pushed away. And after that, Tolbert does what he does best, moves with the football downfield. Look at the hustle to the ball after it comes loose. Offensive lineman around there, Watson, Leo Blanchard coming in late. Tim Petros recovering the fumble by Emmanuel Tolbert. Tolbert having another big year. He's over 1,000 yards. So is Larry Willis. And Petros carries on first down across the rider, 40 into the 39. He'll have four yards. Vince Goldsmith leading the Saskatchewan tacklers. Calgary has a pretty good variety of their running game using both Petros and McVay. Here's a quick hitter. Petros, as it might look, it's designed to come back to the side where Craig Watson and, and Blanchard are blocking. And I think if they're allowed to get that variety and the different styles of running game on track, they could give the defense of the Riders a hard time. Second down and close to seven for the Stampeders, just inside the Rider 40. Kramer is intercepted by Fuller, Joe Fuller. To the 36 of the Riders. The eighth interception of the year for Joe Fuller. The defense sitting back. Kramer is going to go back and makes his read and delivers the ball. Larry Willis is not on the same page, doesn't make the same read. Fuller comes up with the football. Develops a couple of new dance, step, dance steps on the way. Well, that's one of the things that Kuharic was concerned about was the lack of communication and as Narcisse catches a first down pass from Austin. Familiarity that's so important with receivers and quarterbacks, Neil, and perhaps we saw a sign of it there well, on the interception. The, you know, Bob, that's the one thing that takes an awful lot of time. What a receiver will, will do and how he will react to a certain defense or even certain coverage when it's man coverage. This is Kramer's second week only. I said the eighth, it's only the seventh for Joe Fuller. He'll be looking for number eight as the afternoon goes along as Kent Austin on first down throws. And that one is knocked away, and it was close to being intercepted by Derek Taylor, and nobody would have stopped him. Kent Austin starting at quarterback again for the Riders, and he's been there for the last two months. McCray and Jones are his starting running backs. The receiving core, and it's a good solid one with Elgard leading the four pass catchers the offensive line Bill Henry in his third game now starting at left tackle Roger Alday turned 35 years of age this week still going strong second and ten for Austin and he throws complete to Elgard at the 45 of the Stampeders that's a rough rider first down I don't ever know if a receiver knows the ball is going to be thrown to him because it comes to read but it certainly seems like Elgard comes down and comes back knows the ball is going to be there because the hands are out and he's ready to catch it. Catch number 50 of the year for Ray Elgard and number 299 of his career. And the Riders with a 3 nothing lead are first and 10 at the Stampeder 44. This is Tim McRae. Close to the 37 of Calgary. A gaping hole up the middle. Mike Anderson, Aldag, and Illabrun are in the middle, and what they're going to have to do is take care of a blitzing linebacker. Here comes Landry. Good block by Bill Henry coming down, puts him on his back. That's why that hole is so wide open. Doug Landry involved in nine tackles last week in his first game as a Stampeder against the Toronto Argonauts. Got trapped that time. Second and three, Milson Jones. Across the 35, near the Stampeder 34, and near a Saskatchewan first down. Well, the Stampeders have made a lot of changes on their defense in the last few weeks. One of them with Mitchell Price up front playing his second game. Four down linemen and three linebackers. Landry in the middle now and Ford back from injury after a one-game absence. And their secondary has Darcy Kopp at safety. Greg Peterson is injured. Should only miss this one game. First and ten, Rough Riders, just inside Calgary's 35. Austin throws deep, has a man wide open, but he can't get to the ball. Ray McDonald was wide open. Austin overthrows him. McDonald working on Hopkins to that far side. Does a little down and out and tries to hit him down the sideline. 
Austin looking at that list of plays that are strapped on that left wrist. Ted Austin intercepted three times in the Riders' loss last weekend in Winnipeg. Crucial, not so much the interceptions, but they were always in plus territory. That was the area where you should come away with a score. Riders moved the ball pretty well, but made some very costly turnovers. Austin is going to take off and run with it. Boy, and he was hit hard at the Stampede 30-yard line by three Calgary defenders. Austin seems none the worse for wear as he gets up. Austin in that situation might think again if he has to romp the middle. He was met quite abruptly by Landry and a group of other Stampeders. But it seemed like he was never comfortable in that play. Dropped back and, and kind of fidgety, running around and decided to release. Dave Ridgeway has already kicked one field goal today. This try will come from the 37-yard line. He has a helping win. Plenty of distance. And not much wrong with the accuracy. And the Riders go ahead 6-0. 640 left first quarter. Foster's Lager in the Canadian Football Network bringing you the best of the CFL. Calgary head coach Larry Kuharic of being reluctant to make changes. He has made many this year. The latest major change this week when they released quarterback Rick Warman and designated Eric Kramer as their starter. And he will start this drive from the 35. First down pass is complete up near the 50-yard line to Emmanuel Colbert, who has his second catch of the game and a Stampeder first down. Coach Geharich was telling us earlier that he, we will see a number of different combinations out of the offensive set with Willis and Tolbert lining to the inside on opposite sides of the field and putting them on both sides of the field. He feels they can really threaten the two halfbacks, Paul and Fuller, this afternoon. Kramer and the Stamps, first and ten from their 50, trailing 6 nothing. Big pressure, and David Albright gets to Eric Kramer. Well, that might be the first sign of what John Gregory was talking to us about, trying to mix people up. See, Loss will come off that double team at the start of the line of scrimmage a little bit late. 51 didn't slide over to pick up Albright. That's one of those plays that was should be picked up and wasn't because they were prepared to. Albright, the leading tackler on the Rough Riders and the fourth leading tackler in the CFL. Big loss for the Stamps, 11 yards, second and 21 back at their 39 going into the win. And Kramer has heavy pressure again and down he goes again. Simply teeing off, putting the Stamps in a throwing situation and pretty much gambling on that fact they bring the ranch. Eddie Lowe hits through here first. Kramer is able to avoid him with a little bit of help from Andy McVeigh. Gets a, uh, just a shot on Eddie Lowe, but everyone else just folds in. Kramer is considered to be a good scrambler, but he would have needed to be a magician to scramble away from those last two Saskatchewan rushes. Harper's kick into the wind. Richie Hall has it at center field. There's a flag down. And that is going to be another no yards penalty against the Stampeders. Good kick by Harper into that strong win, but no yards will give the Riders another 15 and uh, move the ball well into Calgary territory. No yards. Calgary number 44. First down Saskatchewan. That's two in a row for Joe DeForest. He's going to have to learn to get down there with the same type of enthusiasm but break down far before where, the, where he thinks the ball is going to land. Joe DeForest. Stan Peter linebacker who's a little upset with himself. Six nothing Rough Riders, four and a half minutes to go. First quarter, Saskatchewan in Ridgeway field goal range as McRae carries on first down for three, maybe four yards to the Calgary 37. We talked about Mitchell Price earlier being a big help to this defensive line. Last week when they played, they had him on the nose more and, and Kaharis was saying that they want to get him in a one-on-one -on -one situation with an offensive lineman. They feel he has the skills and the quickness. If he's left on one blocker, he can beat him. Second down and seven, Rough Riders, Calgary 37. Austin, under a big rush, will lose three yards back to the original line of scrimmage at the 40, and this, of course, will signal the entrance to the game once more of David Ridgeway. 
The Stamps have some pressure of their own. Here comes 41, Ford from the outside, immediately forcing him to come up, but I think the key right there is Darcy Kopp. You see him in the middle of the picture, the safety. He comes up and makes Austin step up into the arms of Ford. And Kent Austin was shaken up on that play. He took a good hit just a couple of minutes ago on a run upfield. And this time he remains down on the field. 4-0-1 left. We're in the opening quarter at Taylor Field in Regina. Tom Burgess is getting heated up. Burgess has played very, very little of late. As a matter of fact, he hasn't played at all in five of Saskatchewan's last six games. He played against Hamilton two weeks ago. But they have all sorts of confidence in him, as they do with this man, Dave Richway. Now his lifetime, is, or in the last two years, has kicked 91 of 104. We said that his wife, Nancy, just blessed him with a baby boy. And this will be the first home game, both in pro and in college, that Nancy has not been able to attend. So she'll be at home listening to the radio, biting her nails. You know, the riders are to the point where they take Ridgeway, I think, Neil, pretty much for granted. I guess we all do because he, he just never misses as Kent Austin remains on the field. Yet, as you and I and everybody knows, there are teams in this league who know what it's like to have field goal kickers who don't make them regularly. They cost you games. I think of the Ottawa Rough Riders who suffered some early losses partly because they couldn't kick field goals. So try to take it for granted, but it's not to be taken for granted as Austin appears to be in trouble. I think it becomes clearer for the Riders as last week when they were in scoring territory through the interceptions. And if they had been just stopped on a third down situation, they would have had field goals, possibly three of them, which might have tied the football game for them. And Bridgeway will line it up from the 47 yard line this time. Glenn Suter, his holder. Remember, Ridgeway has the wind with him. And the wind pushes this one well beyond the uprights. And Ridgeway put it through them. And the Riders now lead 9-0, 3.45 remaining in the opening quarter. Up here for quarterbacks in the CFL, lots of injuries. Kent Austin, the latest. We saw Matt Dunnigan get hurt the other night on CFN, and we'll talk with BC head coach Larry Donovan later in our telecast about that. Tracy Hamm and Damon Allen have been hurt. Art Schleister, Mike Kerrigan, Tom Mickey in Winnipeg. Tim Petros carrying for the Calgary Stampeders after Dave Ridgway's third field goal, and Petros has a yard. Well, whatever they're paying the quarterbacks, I don't think it's enough because they certainly have been going down. And, you know, you look at an injury, and you don't like to see a quarterback get hurt at any time. But an injury that takes him out of the game, really, especially at this time of the game, really puts you in, in dire straits if your other quarterback goes down because you'd have no one to back him up. Second and eight to Stan Peters at their 37. Three minutes to go. Opening quarter at Taylor Field, 9 nothing to Saskatchewan. And Kramer again with a big rush, and he's intercepted by Albright, who flips it back to Richie Hall, who's knocked out of bounds at the Stampeder 44-yard line. Well, what a great interception by Albright. Kramer's feeling the pressure. He's being pushed by safety Glenn Suter. But more importantly, Willis is breaking in. He's going to slide back out to the air. But see, you see Richie Hall breaking the football just in front of Willis was David Allback right dropping to his zone. And here's the pressure. Suiter's on the outside. From the inside, you've got pressure. Well, the Riders like to go after quarterbacks at the best of times, Neil, but they are really sending everybody after Eric Kramer in this first quarter, and it's working for them. Burgess gives to McCray on first down, and McCray has a yard, maybe two. Good job. Hello, everybody back home watching. Albright's had a great season, not nearly as many tackles as he put on the board last year, but they haven't been on the field as much. He hasn't been needed. See Albright 39 on your screen, up corner. He just reacts to the football from the zone where he was sitting, goes to the ball, steps in front of Willis. Lots of tackles, but the first interception of the year for Albright as Burgess on second down throws deep, but Ray McDonald had broken the pattern off. Nobody near the football. Well, Eric Hart says it's no magic to how my season has to end. We have to win the football games. Not one is any more important than the other. 
Well, I would say this one today is extremely important for the Stampeders. Neil, if they lose, they're five and nine. They'd stay four points behind BC and a drop way behind the Riders. Ridgeway will try a 50-yard field goal with the win. The distance and the accuracy is there, and it is now 12-0. Saskatchewan Rough Riders leading. He's called Pint, but he's been a large man for Saskatchewan. At halftime today, a look at Richie Hall. In order for me to be successful on the football field, I have to play aggressive because of my size. And I can't sit back and wait for them to dictate to me how they're going to play. Richie Hall, one of the four players the Riders added, veteran players they added in the offseason, who has done so much to provide leadership to the Saskatchewan team and helped them to the 8-5 and five record that they carried into this game. Well, a Kramer to Tim Petros. And he stopped after a gain perhaps of a yard by a rider defense that's led by a front five, although only four play at a time, of Juris Lewis, Klaus, and Goldsmith Curry. Outstanding performers. Rashevich filling in for injured Crane at linebacker. And in the secondary, that's the five-man crew that's been there all season long. Second down and 10, Stan Peters at their 35-yard line. Kramer swings it out to McVeigh, drops the ball. Now they call it an incomplete pass, very close to being a lateral, went out of bounds. Anyway, and they'll call it an incomplete pass, and the Stan Peters will have to punt into the wind. Well, Dave Ridgway loves these types of games, gets an opportunity to put his team ahead very quickly, and those Calgary's defense has done well by stopping the offense of Saskatchewan. They rely on Ridgway to put some points on the boards for them. Ridgway has gone over the 1,000-point mark in his career with his 12 points today, had 992 coming in. Harper's kick grabbed by the wind and thrown out of bounds near center field. There was a flag on the play, 37 seconds left in the opening quarter and the riders have achieved 12 points with a win neil but you're right the stamps have done a good job of not giving up touchdowns because saskatchewan has had good field position every time they've had the ball offside saskatchewan third down repeated well the stampeders are going to punt over hoping that harper can hit this one a little bit better into the win third down over and five yards to go from the Calgary 40. His last punt went out of bounds at center field. And this one carries further downfield. Joe Fuller at the rider 39 and is stopped at the 43. So the Stampeders gain 12 yards by taking the five yard penalty and we did not have a no yards penalty for the first time in the game. Maybe the key to kicking the football is kicking it low and hopefully getting a great bounce, not worrying so much of a spiral. Tom Burgess replacing injured Kent Austin for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, who could virtually clinch a playoff spot if they win today. Not mathematically, but realistically, it would be almost impossible for them to miss if they can win today. Here's Fairholm, and he's got it! The middle's wide open, and Fairholm takes advantage of it. Remember, the wind's behind Burgess right now. He's going to lay that ball up. But watch what a great job Fairholm does of not putting his hands up till he has to. Keeps his speed going. Just stops the ball in air for a second, and he gets inside Taylor and inside the end zone. Well, that's rookie of the year stuff right there. And Jeff Fairholm, of course, is a leading contender. That's his sixth touchdown of the year, a 66-yarder. And on the last play of the quarter, that will hurt Calgary tremendously. Ridgeway with the convert, and it's 19-0 for Jeff Fairholm and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. The first quarter is over. Five of the last six Saskatchewan football games, 
He's in today because of an injury to Ked Austin, and Neil, he's happy. Sure, it's been a while since he's hooked up with a receiver and had success like this. All right, spectacular catch by Fairholm. And the kickoff into the wind is fielded by the Stampeders. Up near their 50-yard line. Heads up play by Jeffers, knowing that the ball's live after it travels 10 yards in the kickoff. With that wind, it can hang up there, and, and pursuit to the football can happen very quickly. Well, Eric Kramer has to get something going on offense now for the Stampeders. They have the win. We're in the second quarter at Taylor Field in Regina. The Riders outscored the Stamps 19-0 with the wind in the first quarter. Kramer, the out to Larry Willis, and oh, did he ever pay for that catch? Rashevich, 74, drilled him out of bounds. We talked about Fairholme's performance this year, Bob, and putting him in the running for Rookie of the Year. He's had a couple of slow games only because, according to Steve Goldman, he's been on the backside of different formations that where they wouldn't normally throw to. But every time they've gone to him, in a couple of been big situations, he's come through. Well, the last four games, Neil, he's only caught five passes for 37 yards, but he has 66 yards today on that touchdown strike from Burgess. Kramer screening to Petros, gets away from the first rider. Across center field and to the Saskatchewan 52, but he'll be a couple of yards away from a first down. There's Lamont Jeffers, a little stampede on the side of his head there. Another expression. And the Stampeders with third down and close to three yards to go from the Ryder 53 will go for it. They're down 19 to nothing. They have the wind here in the second quarter. Three receivers split to the left. Kramer will throw. No good. Intended for Willis. So early in the second quarter, the Rough Riders in command. The Saskatchewan defense has just forced a turnover on downs. The Rough Riders get the ball back. Calgary gambling on third and three. Neil, I know you feel the alternative, which was to punt, had some merit to it. it sure did. You put them down, Saskatchewan down in their own end to start this drive, maybe on their five or ten. The defense comes up big, and then they get better field position. Tom Burgess to Tim McRae on first down. And he runs into the arms of Williams, Quincy Williams, after gaining a couple of yards. Well, the Rough Riders have really had field position. That's a, those are the positions you dream about. You wish you could start every drive right around there. And they've taken advantage of it through the foot of Dave Ridgeway and a big play. Burgess to Fairholme for a touchdown. Burgess, with some pressure, gets away. Gets the ball off. And it was intercepted. But was it inbound? Yes, Calgary has the football. Derek Taylor with a football. Field closing down. They're still talking about it on the sidelines. But Burgess throwing the ball into a tight area. He's going to get pressure, then move to his left. It's tough to throw the football, but watch the defense move with him. You see Landry coming hard. Good block right here by Fairholm on Landry. But he tries to stick that ball in there, and Taylor just played it well. Rookie Derek Taylor, third interception of the year. Not getting exactly the pocket that he wants. It collapses a little bit too soon, and right from up the middle, Mitchell Price is the one that forces him out. 11th interception of the year thrown by Burgess, who has nine touchdown passes. Eric Kramer under heat from Richie Hall, and he gets him way back at the 41. As the game has progressed, I've seen the Saskatchewan secondary move around an awful lot. This time they've got Richie Hall. He's going to be on the left side of your screen. See Suter move over. He's taking Hall's spot. Hall goes and comes hard, isn't touched because the running back is picking up 74 Rasevich. And again, we're seeing the Rough Riders come with that blitz from every conceivable angle, and Kramer really has no chance at all to get away. Try as he might. Second down and 20. Kramer with a short drop and a throw downfield that was nowhere near Mike Soroska, the intended receiver. 
And so the Stampeders will have to punt. As Kramer continues to struggle in his efforts to get something going. Larry Kuharich tried to sign Kramer before the start of last season. He's been after him for quite a while. That's when he was an assistant coach in Calgary under Bob Vespasiani. Finally got him here a couple of weeks ago. And the Riders, as Harper mishandled the ball, will take over again. This game is brought to you by Foster's Lager on the Canadian Football Network. Calgary Stampeders. He works mainly on special teams. Has twice been called for no yards, but can't really be faulted for that problem that Calgary had. Glenn Harper with the ball right there, chest high, and he just dropped it. And the Rough Riders will come up with it at the Calgary 31 yard line. Saskatchewan is 130 yards net offense to Calgary's 28, and the Riders lead 19 0. Just about four minutes into the second quarter. Milton Jones carrying spins away from the first group of bodies and gets maybe five yards. Well, John Gregory was very anxious to see how his football team would respond to this game. A little bit more pressure can really seal the fate of the Riders. He said that we took one step this year when we beat the Argonauts in Toronto in a close game. He said the next step is to come away in this game when the pressure is a little bit more intense. Crunch time, he called it, Neil. He said we'll find out if we have what it takes to be in the playoffs by the way we respond today. And so far, they look like they have what it takes. Here's a draw play. The Riders on second down and five. Milton Jones carrying again. And he'll be well short of the first down. He gained maybe two yards. Jones having a career best season rushing-wise at 632 yards coming into this game. Seventh season in the CFL. Well, we get a look at Mr. Ridgeway again. Four for four in the first quarter. This time, kicking into the wind. And he'll try from 32 yards away with Suter holding. And he drives it, but it went a little bit to the left. David McCrary is going to try to get it out and not succeed. Hit very hard, and the Rough Riders do get the single point to go ahead by 20 to nothing. That's a, that's a pretty good sign of a disciplined special teams. You get so used to, especially with Ridgeway after the ball's been kicked, just keeping your stance and not have to go downfield because it's always good, but that showed good hustle by all of them. I'm not sure what McCurry was so intent about getting it out of the end zone for. You know, sometimes when you kick into the wind, you try to put a little bit more into it, and maybe that little bit of oomph to get some a slower rotation on the ball push it to the left. Ridgeway's had a bad back throughout the year. You have to wonder if it's bothering him because you see him wincing walking off the field, and that's not normal. I know, I didn't see him. Eddie Lowe after Kramer gets away from some of the rush and gets the ball away. Incomplete intended for Christensen, but Kramer will take that because he was back at his 10-yard line. Well, that's exactly what I think Garrett Lewis was saying to Kramer. Take that because they've been all over Kramer to this point in the football game. Wow, this is quite a contrast. We showed you earlier Saskatchewan's good field position. This is where the Stampeders have started their drives from, if you can call them drives, because they have not been able to sustain anything. And right now they're second and 10 at their 35-yard line. Kramer Christensen nearly made a spectacular catch as the ball was tipped, I believe, by Eddie Lowe. Yeah, I think you're right. Kramer can't believe it. He finally gets an opportunity where the defense doesn't come after him. He gets a good chance to set up, good protection, steps up in that little gap and zips it in there. But Eddie Lowe, going one way, is able to come back, get that right arm out. And Christensen almost did the same type of reaction and made the catch. Glenn Harper mishandled the last snap. No trouble with this one. And he gets a good kickoff with a win, pushing it down to Richie Hall at the 25. And Hall is back to the 34-yard line of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. 8.59 to go until halftime. Saskatchewan in front of Calgary, 20 to nothing. 
Edmonton at Calgary. That's okay. Sunday on CFN. And Rick Warman may very well be in that game, or at least on the sidelines for the Eskimos. Eskimos play in Winnipeg tomorrow. Tom Burgess hands off to Milson Jones. Jones around the corner with a good gain of 10 yards, but there is a flag and it's holding against Saskatchewan. So Milson Jones will lose the 10 yards that he worked hard for on that run. Well, Landry came up out of the pile shaking his arms and saying, come on, what's going on? I'm being held. Holding, Saskatchewan 63, first down repeated. Bill Henry, the left tackle, called for holding. Be on the left side here, right in the corner. He comes off. Just, yeah, I'd say, uh, he's got a pretty good hand of Stu Laird. So it's first down and 20 riders at their 25, eight, 25 left in the second quarter. Saskatchewan ahead 20, nothing. Burgess screens to Milson Jones. He gets a block from Aldag, but then is caught from behind by Landry. Good hustle by Landry. Jones will pick up about seven yards on the play. You know, ideally in a screen situation, the front side guard or tackle wants to bring that end up and cut him right now. Get him down on the ground so the quarterback can throw over him. And that isn't exactly the way I think he wanted to have it blocked. The play was successful, getting it upfield, but I think Henry might try to want to get him on the ground a little bit sooner. Burgess hit hard by Laird. But he's all right, filling in for injured Kent Austin. Second down and close to 14 for the Riders at their 31. Burgess, lots of time. He'll throw it deep looking for Elgard, but no good. In Calgary territory, Taylor and David McCrary. Good coverage on Ray Elgard. Well, Calgary's giving the defensive looks where they're moving Darcy Kopp, number 32, around a bit. And in some situations, that middle's wide open. Kopp came up to cover the flat and that's why Burgess was going to the middle trying to get that seam that had been vacated. Terry Baker will punt into the wind and we'll give you an end zone look at how the wind that is in Baker's face will affect the football. Baker lining up on his 16 yard line. Good snap, and Baker hits a low, twisting kick. He got good distance out of it, hitting it very well. Darcy Kopp brings it back to the Rough Rider 51-yard line. So Calgary is going to have good field position as they look for their first points of the game. The number two quarterback coming into this game is number 11, Carl Fodor. He's seen some time as on the field. That quarterback situation at best this year has been kind of up and down, I'd say. Well, we expect to see Todd Dillon on the roster for Calgary's next game. He is with them, joined them early this week. Eric Kramer right now trying to get something started as the Stamps trail 20-0, and Kramer was hit just as he tried to throw that one. And the ball didn't go very far. Rick Clausen got the pressure. Well, a guy who makes a living on just straight hustle, double teamed, and he's going to come through the gap. You watch him. He's just going to just muscle his way past two offensive linemen. Well, maybe there was no contact with the football. Maybe Kramer just uh, was unsettled enough that he couldn't get a good grip on it and get it away. He's had a tough afternoon. Eric Kramer, first CFL start, second game. And the Riders have been all over him, and here they come again. He gets this one away, completes it to Soroska. There is a flag down. And Soroska is down as he was belted. Well, there's the same story. You just start to get something going or something positive happens. They pick up the halfback blitz, and sure enough, they're called for holding. Holding, 61 Calgary, second down repeated. So the holding penalty takes it back. Now, Calgary, Neil, would have prepared all week for the blitzes. They would know the riders would blitz them like crazy in Kramer's first start. Are the riders throwing things at them that they've never seen before? Well, I think they will try to. We don't really get a good look at it, but I think they're going to try to confuse them, not only in coverages, but at the stunts up front, what the defensive linemen are going to do, and the gaps the linebackers pick. Well, the play has whistled bad just as Kramer took the snap from center. Obviously, a lot of it has to do with execution as well. The Stampeders having a tough time blocking the Riders. Time count file. Calgary number 18. Second down repeated. 
Well, offensive line blocking is far more complicated than I think most people give it credit for. It isn't something where you just, and the ball snap, step back and, and, and try to hit the guy in front of you. Sometimes as a guard or a center, when you, the ball snaps, you got to move out, come outside on a linebacker. And that's where the complicated part of the game can, re, can be confusing for an offensive lineman if the defense has the upper hand in the stunt. Second down and 25, Sam Peters. Kramer down by June James, who's the designated import, a linebacker for the Rough Riders. James comes to the Riders after being released just recently from the Indiana Colts, Indianapolis Colts. Here he goes. You see, he's trying to get away from that pressure before it even comes. Kramer sees in the middle. He hasn't had success. Now he steps out. Just a great adjustment by James. What a disastrous half for the Calgary offense. Four sacks now for the Rough Riders, and the Stamps have to kick. Third down, and many yards to go, and Harper drives one with the win over the head of Joe Fuller, who will let it go into the end zone. Did it touch him? I guess not. Fuller downs it five yards in, and the Stampeders finally get a point. It's now 20 to 1 for the Rough Riders as Glenn Harper got a hold of one and with the wind behind him gave it a long ride. Well, last year at this stage, the Stampeders were 6 and 7 and roaring to a good finish under Larry Kuhart. 5 and 8 now. And Saskatchewan, what a difference for them. 3 9 and 1 last year at this time. Right now 8 and 5. And it appears headed for their first playoff berth since 1976. Poli, part of that resurgence last year for the Stampeders. This year, part of what we could call a resurgence right here. The last couple of games in the game. Bird just throwing on first down, hit by Laird just as he unloaded. And the ball did not go where he wanted it to. Well, Stu Laird has had a much improved year. Comes into this game with seven sacks, playing the end. He does pretty good work on Henry by keeping good separation and just sliding around him. You know, if you mix up the type of rush that you have, you bull rush and sometimes you come in and get to the one side, pick the other side, dance all over the place. You can give him a hard time and he is giving Henry a hard time. Second and 10, Riders, they're 35. Burgess gets the ball away, but again, he was hit just as he delivered. I don't know whether it was the hit or the wind that kept the football short of its intended mark, which was Ray McDonald. Well, I think the ball was thrown, and as he was thrown, the body was twisted and brought the ball back away from the receiver a little bit. Once again, 75, far too close to the quarterback. Terry Baker again will kick into the win. 4.55 left in the first half. 20 to 1, Saskatchewan leading. Baker letting as much time run off the clock as possible, so the Riders will have to spend as little time as possible working into the win. A good kick by Baker. Darcy Kopp at the Calgary 49, surrounded and down at the 51-yard line. The Bob Poley, known as one of the better snappers, long snappers in the CFL, he gets that ball back with tremendous speed, always in the right spot for the punter. And then he, you see he'll make sure this ball's punted. Now he knows. You see, he's not sprinting down too hard. He understands the ball's being kicked into the wind. See him break down at least eight yards from where the ball's caught. Takes on McCrary. Gets him in part of the tackle. Uh, the old buzzard does a pretty good job, doesn't he? I don't know if he'd appreciate you calling him an old buzzard. but oh, yeah, actually. I know. I understand. <laughs> he would understand. Eric Kramer. Throws incomplete. James Curry was in Eric Kramer's lap as he threw that ball. Calgary would be in a, a far better situation if they can continue to get pressure on Burgess with just their front four and the way the guys like Laird are playing, they might be able to do that. That would allow them, obviously, to get more people into coverage and take away the passing game. Calgary defense has played well. You, the 66-yard pass, Burgess to Fairholm for a touchdown. Really, the only major impact Saskatchewan's offense has made, but Ridgeway kicked four field goals with the win in the first quarter. Thus, the 20-1 lead. And here's another interception. Harry Skipper. And Skipper down to the 48-yard line of the Calgary Stampeders. Well, you know, you have confidence, Bob, in a receiver when you've only been here a couple weeks. You, he's, I'm sure he's seen Willis on film. 
he's tried to force the ball being Kramer to Willis a couple of times. And right there, the man who's known as the gambler, Harry Skipper, number 26, plays the quarterback. Really didn't pay much attention to Willis. And Harry Skipper has his sixth interception of the year, and there was also a penalty on the play. Unnecessary roughness, Calgary number 89. First down to Saskatchewan. I think you see some frustration coming out of there out of Larry Willis. He's not normally that type of player. Is what Kramer looks at. Eddie Lowe once again. Albright coming late on a blitz. And a man who is chasing a milestone. Chasing Paul Bennett's record of 1,004 yards and interception returns. Closes the gap. He needed 32 yards to tie Bennett. Well, he's closing in on that. And Eric Kramer is at a frustrating afternoon at Taylor Field. Riders now with the roughing penalty tacked on to the intersection return. Their first and ten at the Calgary 34. Play whistle dead, and I think that Burgess took too long to get that play off. Time count violation. Saskatchewan 16. First down repeated. 320 left in the first half. Saskatchewan leading 20 to 1. First down and 15. Now as we look at Kent Austin, who left the game in the first quarter. Had a good start before he hurt that knee. Cheering Tom Burgess from the sidelines. Burgess on first and 15. May take off and run with it. And he'll get inside the 30 to the 28 of the Stampeders and cause head coach John Gregory, I would think, a little concern down to one quarterback and to see him run upfield like that, Neil, has to be just a bit unsettling for the coach. Yeah, but you can't take that part of the game away from Burgess. He does it so well, and you can't get him in the sidelines and say, look, we only have one quarterback. Don't run. You've got to stay with your game plan. This is a Foster's Lager telecast on the Canadian Football Network. It's been a long day so far for Larry Q. Harts, the head coach of the Stampeders, and a pleasing day for John Gregory, Saskatchewan leading the Stamps 20-1, 255 left in the first half. And the Riders second and four at the Calgary 28. Burgess throws in the end zone. Elgard is all alone. Touch. No, they've thrown a penalty flag. He did not catch the football, but there is a penalty flag. Pass interference. Calgary number three. First down to Saskatchewan. David McCrary called for interference, and the Riders will be on the Calgary one. Execution's outstanding. Roger Aldag, left guard, comes and pulls out the fake to McCrary. Watch Aldag turn back to the inside, seal it. Now Burgess just has a great view of the field. Elgard adjusts the ball, hangs up just a little bit. McCrary turns and gets called for interference. So convinced was I that Elgard was going to catch the ball. I called it a touchdown, but not on the pass, but this time Burgess gets over and the Rough Riders do have the touchdown. And I don't think he did it on the first sneak either. I think it was just being persistent. Watch Burgess. Once. Nope. Better try another door. That one opened up a little bit better. The Stampeders still don't believe he's in the end zone. Second touchdown of the air for Tom Burgess, and the Rough Riders go ahead 26 to 1. Ridgeway makes it 27 to 1. Saskatchewan over Calgary, two minutes, 39 seconds remaining until halftime, and Tom Burgess, congratulated by Kent Austin. Well, you see the doors closed pretty convincing right there by Landry and Ford to first, but he keeps his feet. He doesn't try to lay out in front of his offensive lineman. Slides a little bit to the right, and Anderson and Illebrun open up just up enough of a gap for him. You know, Neil, John Gregory has to feel good about what's happening here. You hate to see anybody get hurt, obviously, and Austin is injured, but to see Burgess get a chance, and he's played so little of late, of course, Juharic has nothing to be happy about, but Burgess getting a chance to get back in there, do something positive, and lift his spirits a little bit. Well, when you look at the depth that they have at quarterback with Burgess, Larry Kaharic wishes he had that much in his starting quarterback. That's really what they're missing today is some experience from the guy who stands behind the center.
to pick up defenses, make the proper reads, and then execute. And you can't blame Kramer. I mean, he's only no. been here a couple of weeks. Well, when you make the kind of change, too, that your hearts did this week, you open yourself up to second guessing if it doesn't work out. And they dropped Warm and activated Kramer, who has very little experience. And to this point, it has not worked out at all. <laughs> Andy McVeigh with the kickoff is back to the Stampede 48 yard line before he is hit very hard again by June James. Down by 48, June James. Well, once again, Kramer will try to settle things down. Carrot said he's a very calm, layback individual. He'll have to be to try to keep the poise and, and everyone together in that huddle. And that's as important as anything, taking control of the huddle to start the play and say, look, guys, we can, we can do this. Let's just everyone do their job. Well, they'll start this drive from their 48-yard line. Kramer will screen. Nicely set up, Tim Petros with the ball, and Richie Hall runs him down at the Stampeder 51, but it's about 10 yards. Looks like it might be a Calgary first down. Well, one of the ways to try to get pressure off, and most people know is draw screen, and this is awfully well executed. Kramer going straight back. You see the back switch positions? Petros comes after the snap of the ball. McVeigh goes to the other side. First first down of the quarter for the Stampeders, and this pass from Kramer was dropped by Mike Soroska. Well, that doesn't do much for the quarterback's confidence either when he does get an opportunity to stick the ball in there. They have to be caught. And he can't do it all. Well, anything possible that could go wrong for Kramer this afternoon has pretty well gone wrong, wouldn't you say? Has right now, but that's the great thing about football, especially in the CFL. So much can happen in the second half. And one of the major reasons so many things have gone wrong is the Saskatchewan defense, which Looks like it's lining up to come after Kramer again and does. He gets the ball away, but nowhere near the intended receiver as James Curry and June James were all over Eric Kramer. That's a mouthful, James Curry and June James. He's been introduced to this Omni turf this afternoon. June, June James the front side and Curry on the back side quite rudely introduced to this new surface here at Taylor Field. Eric Kramer, I'm James Curry. Welcome to the Canadian Football League. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he said that for a second. Nice to have you with us. Third down and 10. The Stampeders will gamble at the Ryder 51. And Kramer again. Eddie Lowe this time getting through. And the pass goes incomplete. And once again, the Riders take over on down. Well, maybe it's a situation where the Stampeders better start keeping their running backs in. Because Eddie Lowe, Suter comes to that one side. The release stops him from blitzing. But Eddie Lowe right up the middle. No one touches them. They've obviously occupied all of the offensive linemen, so no one's there to block them. And Tom Burgess with two minutes and 11 seconds. The defense gets a pretty good hand, and rightfully so. Burgess might have an opportunity to put more points on the board. 2-11 left in the first half. Tom Burgess, poor percentage, but 72 yards, 66 of it a touchdown throw to Jeff Farrell, Milton Jones. First down carry is near center field for about four yards. We've talked about what an asset Milson Jones has been, as Landry will be to the defense of the Stampeders if they ever get on track. You see him come up a little bit limping. Far more settled this week in Calgary. Last couple of weeks he's been fighting the flu and, of course, moving to a new city. All that can disrupt your play. Second and five. Ryder second and six at center field. And out goes to McCray, and he's tripped oh, up. Just as he McCray. appeared to be getting up his speed, Laird, I believe, got in and hauled him down at the 52. Two and a half yards, close to three yards away from a first down. The fans would like to see John Gregory gamble, but he sends out the punting team with a minute 47 to go until halftime, and the Riders leading Calgary 27 to 1. Saskatchewan 8 and 5. They can move into a tie for first in the West with Edmonton if they can win today, but the Eskimos. We'll have a game in hand, which they'll play tomorrow in Winnipeg. Well, the wind grabs this kick by Baker. McCrary runs up to catch it and is down at the 35 of the Stampeders. No, no yards penalty that I can see. Good punt by Baker. Into the wind, was able to 
kick a spiral and turn the ball over. Eric Kramer will try once more to see what he can get going. He has to be shaken up, Neil, at this stage with that rush of the riders coming from every conceivable angle. Pass intended for Emmanuel Colbert over his head along the sidelines up around the yard line. Well, a little bit of a, a ploy or a change of plan here by Larry Kaharitz rolling Kramer out, a semi-roll, trying to get away from that rush. There are different techniques offensively to try to do that, to drop straight back and then go into a roll or sprint out hard, as we see a guy like Matt Dunnigan or Damon Allen do so well. But somehow, some way, they've got to stop that force, and it's all wearing green. Kramer on second and 10 from his 35. Hands up to Petros on a draw, and he gets three or four yards. And the Stamps, once again, will have to punt the football. Saskatchewan quarterback Kent Austin went out of the game in the first quarter. That's him with the hat on, and he is going to have arthroscopic surgery on his knee tomorrow, so he's going to be out possibly for the rest of the regular season, probably for the rest of the regular season. Well, they've made great advances with that. That's when they stick a couple of pins in the, your knee and look around and then just pull out the pieces. Hopefully there'll be nothing wrong. Punt is taken by Richie Hall. Richie Hall with the Glenn Harper punt back to the 30-yard line of Saskatchewan. And the Rough Riders with their 26-point lead. Yeah, I guess if they go in and don't find any major damage, then he could be back within, what, four weeks, perhaps? Uh, maybe even less, depending on how quick a healer he is. You know, I've seen players that have been scoped, and that's the short form of arthroscopic surgery, and come back two or three weeks, depending, again, on how much swelling is initially from the injury, and, as you said, how, how serious the in initial injury is. Kenny Ford shaken up. They do fear some cartilage damage in Austin's knee. We should tell you that. Uh, we'll hope for the best. Uh, you know... Kenny Ford dislocated an elbow a week and a half, well, about nine days ago, and he's made a comeback in one week, and that's incredible because I guess it, according to Larry Kaharich, it had popped out, and he put it back in very quickly. But boy, oh boy, I mean, I, mean, I even think about a dislocated finger, and I get the yips, but... Kind of tells you something about how badly he wants to play, doesn't it? <laughs> Come back from an injury like that so quickly. Four field goals in the first quarter for Dave Ridgway. Got the Riders off and running. And on the last play of the opening quarter, Tom Burgess hit Jeff Fairholm with a long touchdown pass. Saskatchewan all the way with a 26-point lead. And Tim McRae running on first down, breaking tackles out to the 40-yard line. He has a gain of 11 or 12. And a Rough Rider first down. McRae has not seen much of the football in recent games, but he's getting a steady diet of it today. Uh, great running position, giving the tacklers nothing but shoulder pads and helmets. Watch, he dips down in on contact. Good spin, gets the shoulder down again. They're helping him downfield. And when you don't get the ball and you get an opening like that, a guy like McRae can turn a little yards into an awful lot. Just gone over 400 yards on the season. McRae only carried four times in their last game and nine in the game before that. But he's seeing a lot of the football today, and he has it again on first down. And he's stopped for... No gain, maybe a small gain. 29 seconds left until halftime. John Gregory with, a, I would say, a relieved, contented look on his face. Uh, I, we talked about last week's game to him, and he said he was disappointed in the lack of discipline shown by the players. I mean, it is an 18-game schedule, and it, people do slip up, but the penalties that hurt them. Five and nine against Western teams in his two years as left rider head coach. Tom Burgess faking, but then encountering Quincy Williams as he tried to move around the right end and stopped for a loss of two or three yards. Eight seconds until halftime, and the Calgary Stampeders will call a timeout to hope for a bad Baker punt or a block and a chance to score before the half ends. Remember talking to Terry Baker when he first became a rider and he was telling me one of the prerequisites of, of making this football team as a punter is they don't try you out here unless it's a windy day. They make you punt against the wind. They don't care how you can punt with the wind or on a normal day. It's against the wind that's important. Well, Terry Baker's going to get a chance to do it again. Ridgeway had the win with him on the field goal tries and successful field goal attempts, four of them in the first quarter. 
Baker has been kicking into the wind here in the second and doing a pretty good job. Hurts the average, but he gets another good one away. Over the head of Darcy Kaufman, it goes out of bounds at the 46 of the St. Peters with one second on the clock. And Calgary will send out their offense and line up for one long throw downfield, likely. They might send McLaughlin out and try a 65, 71-yard field goal. <laughs> well, he has a strong leg. <laughs> well, and he's got a big win. That would have been kind of fun to see that. David McCrary has a sprained ankle, expected to come back in the game. Barring penalty, this will be the final play of the first half, and it will end with Kramer eating the football, and perhaps that's fitting because he has spent the entire opening half trying to escape Saskatchewan defenders and not succeeding very often. The Rough Riders with a 26-point halftime lead. is one of the smallest players in the CFL, but he's been a big man for the Rough Riders in this very successful season here in Saskatchewan. Small world. Small, small world. Small, small world. He's probably the only guy who has a, a life-size pitcher of himself in his wallet. In order for me to be successful on the football field, I have to play aggressive because of my size. And I can't sit back and wait for them to dictate to me how they're going to play. You know, to me, I have to try to use my size to, much, to as much of an advantage as I possibly can. So to me, that has to go out there and be reckless. He doesn't look like a football player. Actually, he looks like a high school, a high school kid. Richie the Pied Hall has taken considerable ribbing over his stature. At five feet six inches, well, he just shouldn't be playing football. But in six CFL seasons, he has certainly proved he belongs. He is small on uh, stature, but uh, he's got a big heart and uh, he's an excellent football player. Richie came to the Rough Riders in a trade with Calgary. His play there was exceptional. Paul was a fan favorite and very popular in the community. The move was unexpected. I was very surprised. Uh, it kind of took me off guard because I, you know, I, I figured that I would spend the rest of my career in Calgary. You know, I felt that I played five good years there and, you know, I was involved in a lot of community type work and, you know, I just enjoyed Calgary as my home. I don't have any animosity towards them or anything like that. Um, you know, they're just another team in the league, you know. They, I treat them just like BC and Edmonton, you know, as long as we finish a ahead of them. You know, that's my only concern. The 1988 Rough Riders are reminiscent of Hall's 86 Stampeders. That year, Hall had eight interceptions. That team was a hungry team. Um, and that team didn't really realize how good it could be. You know, and then we had a good year last year. And I think that's, that reminds me a lot of the characteristics and the personality in this team. They really don't know how good they can be or how good we can be because we, we're just as talented as anybody in the league, and we play hard, and, and we know that when we play hard, good things have happened to us. Paul is not only respected for his defensive talents. Since he turned pro in 1983, the pint has electrified the league with some exciting punt returns. That's, to me, that's the most exciting part for me, to be a punt returner. Um, I think it's more exciting than playing defensive back. You know, I really enjoy doing it because I'm small. Um, you know, I have a good, I have good quickness, I think, and as far as just picking a seam and trying to get through a hole, I think that's one of my attributes. Paul expects this rider team to go a long way. Strong character, a veteran defense. He might be small, but he's willing to sacrifice for success. I think that when I get on the football field, I'm going to sell my soul for all the members of the team out there, and I just hope they're doing the same.
our next telecast. On a gorgeous 19 degree October afternoon here in Regina, the Saskatchewan Rough Rider fans treated thus far to a great show by the Rough Riders. And at the end of the first quarter, one of the highlights for Saskatchewan fans was this tremendous catch by rookie Jeff Fairholm that turned into a 66 yard pass and run play. The quarterback Tom Burgess gave the Riders a 19 to nothing lead after the first quarter. It's now 27 to one. Neil Lums in one of the highlights of the first half, some good pass rush and not just by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Though there have been some great battles, and I think if we're going to see more success like Fairholmes had, the offensive linemen are going to have to tighten down. But, but you're right, both have been going at it. Right here, Bill Henry has his hands full, as he has had in the first half, with Stu Laird. It's a screen pass. It worked out well for Henry, as if the protection was there, but a big hit. We start here with lower part of the field. Good protection by both Watson and Lasso, but at the back side, James Curry. That's the great thing about the Saskatchewan defense. You can... Three or four of them can be tied up, but one will come through. Tremendous difference. Offense, net yards, Saskatchewan 180 and 17 in the turnover. Six by the Stamps and only one by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So at halftime, Saskatchewan enjoying a 26-point advantage. Regina is brought to you by Carling O'Keefe Brewers of Foster's Lager and Priority Post EMS Courier, your better business connection in Canada and around the world. It is a long way back for the Calgary Stampeders and they will have the win as they kick off to start the third quarter. Mark McLaughlin down to the eight yard line to Denny Ferdinand. Kicks taken by and Ferdinand has stopped at the Saskatchewan 28. Jeff Johnson, a backup running back, just activated for this game, leading the Calgary Tacklers downfield. Tom Burgess comes out, and he will be the quarterback for the rest of the game, barring injury, with Ken Austin out, scheduled for arthroscopic surgery on his knee tomorrow. Teams have mixed up their play selection on offense quite well. Doug Landry nearly picked off Tom Burgess, and what a lift that perhaps would have given the Stampeders. Ideally, the Stamps would have liked to get a turnover on the, the kickoff return, but watch Burgess here. He'll drop back, and he'll pump and step up, pump and step up. He's trying to find Elgar. See, a couple times now, him waiting allows Landry to read the quarterback Burgess and move to the spot where Burgess is trying to aim and stick that ball. Well, and he looked at that one area, Neil, and just focused on it. And it led Landry to the football. Second and 10, Burgess, quick pass. Elgard was open, but it was a little bit behind him, and he just couldn't quite bring it in. Burgess preferred starting the second half as John Gregory would and the rest of the coaching staff of the Riders to put a drive together. Good job, Tommy put some more points on the board make that make it that much tougher for the Stampeders. Gary Baker will kick into this strong wind on third down and 10 at the Rough Rider 27 28 yard line. Good snap again from Foley. High kick. The wind really holds it up. David McCrary inside the rider 50 to their 49 yard line so larry kuharich and stan peters will have excellent field position as they get the ball for the first time and i guess we couldn't say they have to score on every possession but in this third quarter neil if they're going to have any chance of getting back into this game eric kramer has to make something happen with the win well, i couldn't guarantee it but i would assume at half time they'd get on the blackboard in the dressing room and drop the situations that they've seen the play, in the Calgary, first half in respect to where the defense of the Riders have been lining up and the different looks they've been given. And then what do you do to deal with it? How do you get them out of a blitzing defense? Well, there's one way and a quick way, and that's burn them a couple of times. That'll make the defense back off. If Calgary can't burn them and hurt them, they'll keep coming. Kramer's first play of the second half, he gets some time and he throws long for Tolbert. But he's not able to get to the football at the Rider 15-yard line. But 
if that is an indication of what's in store for Kramer in the second half, he would be pleased because he had some time to get rid of the football. Yes, asking Larry Kaharich, does he have a full understanding of the offense to this point after two weeks? He said he does in respect to the game plan, 100%. But if you ask him to go through the playbook, he'd be lost. But the game plan is the most important thing. Eric Kramer has completed two of his last 13 passes. Looks for the second and 10 now at the Ryder, 48 and a half. And he dropped the ball, and the Riders have it. Eddie Law, I believe, came up with it. Looks like the Riders have the ball. Foster's Lager in the Canadian Football Network bringing you the best of the CFL. Offside. And so the Riders, or the Stampeders, pardon me, will retain possession. They'll have second down over, and they'll have five yards to go at the Saskatchewan 43. Kramer throws, complete to Tolbert. Emmanuel Tolbert gets away from two Riders and gets to the one-yard line. What an effort by Emmanuel Tolbert, who's been the most consistent receiver on the Calgary team all year long, a 42-yard game. Well, when you can attach that type of effort at the end of a catch and watch Tolbert, Kramer still is going to get hit by Goldsmith just as he throws it, but Tolbert has good position on the linebacker, Albright. And now this is just great effort to get down near the goal line and almost over. Tolbert's had eight games this year where he's had more than 80 yards in pass reception. Impressive numbers, and the Sam Peters on the one, first and goal. Petros goes nowhere as a penalty flag comes down. Offside, Saskatchewan line, first down repeat. Ken Lazarick says the Rough Riders lined up offside. And so it'll be first down and goal to go over to the Stampeders is a miffed John Gregory. Who looks toward his team's goal line. Kramer keeps it himself and he's in. The Stampeders have their first touchdown of the afternoon. It comes at 2.57 of the third quarter. Kramer this time not mind getting hit as he takes it over in the end zone. He's going to step and go behind Craig Watson. He still there's a there's a fair good no, fair number of Saskatchewan players getting penetration even down close like that. Second effort by Kramer takes it in. Finally gets them on the board. Touchdown set up by the offside penalty against the Riders that kept the Calgary drive going. McLaughlin to attempt to convert which he makes and that makes it a 27 to 8 football game. Saskatchewan in front. Well, on Friday night on the Canadian Football Network, Matt Dunnigan at BC Place on this run collided with Les Brown of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, producing a scary moment. Dunnigan was helped to his feet. That was a go-ahead touchdown in the game, and initially Dunnigan, you could tell he was hurt, but looked like he might be okay. However, he was taken away with his neck in a brace, taken to hospital, and there was great concern, obviously. Larry Donovan, the BC head coach, is with us. Larry, tell us how Matt Dunnigan is. Well, yesterday he was a lot better. Uh, he's in a great deal of pain. There's no doubt about that. As you saw, that was a tremendous hit on the goal line. Uh, I think he's going to be okay. We're real concerned for him, and he himself, he was very, very scared at first as to what it might be. And uh, it appears that it's just a severely uh, strain, uh, severe strain of the neck. Well, Larry had everyone concerned when any time that situation happens. But a few years ago. When Matt was an Eskimo, he had a neck injury. Is it, in, is it related to that? Is it like a jam, or is it a little bit more serious? Well, when they x-rayed him, uh, they were saying, the doctors were uh, relating to Bill Rochelle, our trainer, that uh, he had scar tissue there from previous uh, hits similar to this type of a situation. You know, he's such a competitor. He won't back off. Uh, we'd like to see him avoid some of those uh, situations, but then you do that, and you take the edge away from a great quarterback. Larry, you'll be here next Sunday to play the Rough Riders. Will Dunnigan be able to play? Well, we're counting on him at this point. And the two wins you just scored over Hamilton have really turned things around in your camp, haven't they? Well, it sure gives us a good feeling. There's no doubt about that. We know we've got uh, a run now that the fact that the next four games are against the people we have to beat and vice versa. So with Calgary, Saskatchewan playing each other, Edmonton playing into the Calgary, Saskatchewan scenario, all of us playing each other here in the next four weeks. Very, very important four weeks for us. 
There you sit and watch this game. Uh, whose banner are you waving? Well, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm just watching. But I think that the pressure that Saskatchewan has put on the new quarterback has been a difference in the football game. And when he gets a little time, it seems like he's getting some things done. So I don't know if the edge is as big as the score at this point. Larry Donovan, thank you for joining us. And we do hope you have Matt Dunnigan next weekend when you play here against the Rough Riders. Tom Burgess on second down scrambling picks up five yards out to his 30 but the stampeder defense neil has done what the whole thrust of this third quarter would be for them to do and that stop the riders make them kick very quickly into the wind so they can give the ball back to their offense in good field position and let's not forget how they started the game i mean they played very well only giving up field goals and i think they've just referred returned to that form and that is the key to their success the rest of the afternoon they can tighten down and take away all aspects of the Regina offense. Gary Baker on third down and six again, taking as long as he can. The Riders working into the wind. He hits a low driving boot. It's a good one into the wind. McCrary, though, catching it near center field and inside the Saskatchewan 50. 10.32 to go, third quarter, 27-8, Rough Riders. <laughs> largely to four Dave Ridgeway field goals, three interceptions of Eric Kramer passes, five quarterback sacks, and Ken Austin went out with a knee injury for the Riders. A big part of the story here at Taylor Field. That happened in the first quarter. He'll have arthroscopic surgery tomorrow. Tom Burgess relieved him. Sam Peters, Andy McVeigh with a good effort, got away from the first tackler on first down at the Rider 49 and maybe picked up a couple of yards. McVeigh's going to take this handoff just to the right. He's going to come inside, and Curry is all over McVeigh. Just a great job of, by McVeigh to keep his feet to be spun around, get back upfield. Well, he gained uh, a couple of yards to the rider, 47. It'll be second down for the Stampeders. And Eric Kramer has pressure, gets away from some of it, and then he's down back at the 52 of the Rough Riders. And what does Larry Kuharich do now? Well, he's sending out field goal kicker Mark McLaughlin is Bobby Jurison. Got a terrific year. Stopped Eric Kramer. Well, guts and hustle is how Gregory des describes Bobby Jurison. C-27 suitor, he's up in the play again. Another, dip another look for Kramer to try to dissect and figure out what's going on in the secondary. Mark McLaughlin will try a 58-yard field goal with the win. And it's good. Mark McLaughlin kicks a 58-yard field goal. 9.27 left now in the third quarter. And it's now a 16-point game, 27-11, Saskatchewan. A nice smooth kick by McLaughlin. He has a very strong arm. That's one of the things that impressed Kaharich about McLaughlin earlier on. And of course, his confidence is back after having a slow start when he first went with the Stampeders, but... Hey, now they know they're in, they, they can score from that area of the field. We might see more of young Mark McLaughlin. 22-year-old rookie from the University of South Dakota, Mark McLaughlin. And Taylor Field has become a lot quieter in this third quarter as the Stampeders fight to get back in the game and continue those efforts by sacking Tom Burgess for a loss of seven or eight yards. Mitchell Price leading the Calgary Sackers. And that, that sack came from just the front four. See the pressure. Price comes around to the outside and slants quickly in. I think the key, as I said earlier, if they can continue that type of pressure with four guys, it'll make it tough on Burgess downfield to find an open receiver. Well, it'll be tough on Burgess, Neil, to get a first down here as he looks at second and long, second and 17. And throws for Ray McDonald, but made sure he threw it far enough so it didn't fall into the wrong hands. And with 8.33 left in the third quarter, the Stampeders once again will get the ball back and will likely have very good field position. Terry Baker will take as much time as you pointed out earlier on that time clock before he takes the snap from Bob Poley. Baker will hit this ball from around his 15-yard line. He stands back at the 13. Good snap, and a high kick 
Pretty good one again into the wind. McCrary at center field. David McCrary. And he's back to the 49-yard line of the Rough Riders. Again, pretty good field position for the Stampeders. They're now within 16 at 27-11. This CFN game is brought to you by Foster's Lager. In Saskatchewan at halftime. It's now 27-11, Rough Riders. And the Calgary Stampeders have the football first and 10 at the Rider 49. The wind behind them, eight minutes left, third quarter. And a chance to really get themselves back in the game if they can take it in and score. Eric Kramer throws looking for Tolbert, but he led him a little bit too far down at the 40-yard line. Kramer now beginning to pick up some of the looks that Saskatchewan's giving him. This time, Suter, number 27, started deep middle where he normally does, then came on a delay blitz, and that's where Kramer was trying to get the football to his receiver. Slowly but surely, uh, you see him starting to develop as this game is going and recognize some things. I'm sure Saskatchewan's defense has a few tricks yet to throw at him. Might expect him to come here on second and 10 at the Ryder 49. Kramer throws, and it was nearly picked off by Skipper, who stepped in front of Larry Willis. Willis got tangled up with Skipper and Rasevich over there as well and fell on the play. As you said, Rasevich was over there. Skipper was in coverage, and I think just a good job by the linebacker to get out there. He's already got that deep drop. Skipper's playing up close. Tough throw, and Willis looks at the referee, expecting a call of interference. And Mark McLaughlin is on the field again. He just kicked a 58-yard field goal. This time he's only trying from the 56. <laughs> well, there is no 56-yard line, but it's a 56-yard effort. And it's a little bit wide. He had the distance, and Joe Fuller will bring it out. And bring it out to the rider, 31-yard line. So Saskatchewan's defense comes up with an important stand to keep the Stampeders from moving in and scoring for the third time in a row. Maybe more importantly now that the defense did their job, Burgess and the offense have to move the ball down the field and try to take, with seven minutes left and counting, take about two minutes off that clock and control the football. Burgess has been throwing into the wind in the third quarter. We'll see if he tries to work that running game. First and 10 at the 31. Hands off to McCray on a draw play, and McCray's up to the 38, maybe the 39. And Doug Landry slams his helmet to the turf. We could only presume what he's upset about, but you'd almost think it's holding, or he feels he's being held. I'd say that's a pretty fair assessment, Bob. <laughs> He was livid. McCray with nearly eight yards. We'll call it second and two riders at their 38 and a half. Yes, Milson yes. Jones tripped up in the backfield. Okay, Quincy Williams yeah. got through to grab Milson Jones. Stopping for no gain. Looks like a loss of a yard or two. And the riders looking like they were going to be able to hang on to the ball for a while into the wind. We'll have to punt again. Williams, as you said, gets through very quickly. See Landry pointing to the right side. He gets through and really seals the fate of Milton Jones. But Jones has to throw himself, it gets thrown off a bit by Quincy Williams' early penetration. The average doesn't show it, Neil, but Baker has kicked pretty well into the wind. Oh, I think he has. He's turned the ball over. Good hang time. He hasn't had any returns. Clock down to 5.50 left, third quarter. Baker using up as much of it as he can. And he gets another good kickoff. McCrary at the 45 of the Stampeders. McCrary trying to get outside. Now he's heading back inside. McCrary finally knocked out at the 34 of the Rough Riders. And Terry Baker was one of the Saskatchewan players over there to force him out of bounds. Well, I cursed him as soon as I said he hadn't had any good returns on his punch, sure enough. You'll get to see what McCrary will look at as they come down and cover him. See that ball just sit up there. The wind's going to push it. Pretty good coverage around the football, but McCrary hits up in here, finds the gap, then bounces it back outside. See, the pursuit has come already, already in and committed themselves. Sam Peters, first and 10, Saskatchewan 34. Kramer finds Soroska. 
down at the 15-yard line with a big pass rush in his face. Kramer does a good job of getting the ball down to Mike Soroska, former Toronto Argonaut. Once again, over the middle, Kramer has had some success. That last play by Tolbert, he caught the ball over the middle. Two of the 1,000-yard receivers in the CFL this season in the game today. Both of them, Sam Peters, Tolbert, and Willis. Larry Willis looks wide left. First down and 10 at the 15. Petros running with the ball and following his blocking to about the 11 of the riders for a gain of around four. Well, Petros is a, is a tough guy to arm tackle. You just can't reach in and try to pull him down. You're going to have to square up on him either from an angle or on the side to give him a good hit and wrap him up. John you know, Gregory looking, uh, sorry, Neil, a little more concerned than he was earlier. Well, I was going to say the concern is on his face, and there's also a little bit more meetings on the sidelines, people talking about situations. You can see that concern start to come to the top now. Second down and six, Stan Peters at the rider 11. Kramer throws. Tolbert was open, but he led him a little bit too far, and Tolbert couldn't make the catch. Larry Willis got the deflection, but uh, nobody's buying that it was a catch. <laughs> That 58-yard field goal by Mark McLaughlin was a Calgary club record. J.T. Hay held the old mark of 57. Watch the pressure come from the right side of the screen. Once again, a halfback. You see uh, McVeigh look over, pick up the first man, Rasevich. Second man's picked up by the lineman, but just enough time to throw the ball in there. McLaughlin on to try an 18-yarder. Harper puts it down, and McLaughlin puts it through. And it's now 27-14 for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders as the stamps continue to chip away the sobering thought for them is that they'll have to go into the wind in the fourth quarter but i think when you if you can get enough confidence and enough momentum when you're going with the wind and that confidence can roll over into the fourth and final quarter you don't really even know you're going into the wind it's something i mean the wind is as much mental as it is anything else you think well we can't throw the ball under the wind i've seen plenty of quarterbacks move the ball going into the wind and have great success Let's see if Burgess has any success as he throws, intended, I believe, for Narcisse, but well behind him around the 50-yard line. Well, Stampeders will like it if they throw the riders throw the ball and don't have success because the clock doesn't get a chance to tick off very much, which obviously means they get more opportunity with the win, at least for the long field goals if they come in, if they have the opportunity. Second and 10 riders. But they're 35, looking to up their record to 9-5. and five. With a win this afternoon. Burgess over the middle. There's a flag down. Landry, you say, did not catch the football. There are penalty flags. Doug Landry again is displeased. Holding against the Riders. And with 3.04 left in the third quarter, Sam Peters will probably decline that penalty so they can get the ball again. Saskatchewan 61, decline. Third down. Second time today, Landry's had an opportunity for an interception in the first quarter. This time, a good job of reading the receiver. Boy, he, is, he does a great job of reading the quarterback, getting to the area where he's responsible for first, but then reacting to the quarterback and going to the receiver. Nearly a spectacular interception. Baker again kicks into the win. Undoubtedly growing tired of this. He'd like to lift a couple with the win but he's done a nice job. It's a good snap again. Not as good as some of his earlier kicks. It bounces back upfield, and McCurry picks it up at the sidelines and then is able to work his way down to about the 42 or 43 of the riders. With the score, Saskatchewan 27 and Calgary 14. We pause 10 seconds for the stations from coast to coast to identify themselves. You're watching the Canadian Football Network. Hollering as Bobby Jurison went into the game and Rashevich comes out. Second down and about two and a half for the Stampeders. At the rider, 34. And the pass intended for Soroska, no good down at the 21-yard line. Well, what we've seen, Bob, and when you pointed out the defenses early in the game and showed the five defensive linemen with Rasevich coming out, Jurison comes in, we do, in fact, see all five in the game at once. So you can see they're looking for the pass rush 
on Eric Kramer and just using the two linebackers dropping into coverage. Well, and they had good pressure on Kramer, but he was able to get the football away. Soroska unable to get there and make the catch. Mark McLaughlin, both his field goals in the third quarter, and he'll try a 41-yarder. Harper takes a high snap and puts it down, and McLaughlin puts the kick through. So with a minute 17 left in the third quarter, it is now 27 to 17 for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. But, Neil, I don't know if the field goals are quite enough to get the Stampeders in a position they'll need to be in going into the fourth quarter. Well, I think if you look at it from the Stampeder side, it's a start. I mean, they're finally getting some consistency. Three points here, three points here. Uh, they've moved the ball a little bit better. I think it'll slow. It'll slowly coming together for them. Whether it's enough, as you said, I don't know. Larry Kuharic has obviously decided he wants these points for the win. We would often see him gamble, I think, in some of the circumstances that he has kicked field goals. Nelson Jones carrying on first down for very little yardage, if any. I think what might be as important as anything else is you see the enthusiasm, everyone around Landry, he gets himself up tight in the line and just makes a great play coming down and running down the ball carrier. And maybe what we're seeing here is that lift of enthusiasm. The momentum might change that much more in Calgary's favor for the last quarter. 33 seconds left in the third quarter. If the Riders don't get a first down here, they'll have to punt once more into the win. Burgess puts it up long, intending it for Elgard. And he comes back to the ball and makes the catch down at the Stampeder 44-yard line. Well, I think you might hear some squawking on the sidelines, at least at the, the Stampeder bench, thinking that Elgard did interfere with McCrary's coverage. Good protection up front, picking up the blitz. Great job by the offensive line. See the pushing and shoving downfield. Big play for the Riders and Burgess. And he'll just... And he just put that up there and said to Elgard, you <laughs> outfight the guy for it. And Elgard did. And the Riders get a large play to keep from having to kick the ball before the end of the third quarter. And McCray has a good eight or nine yard gain on the final play of the third quarter that sees the Saskatchewan Rough Riders leading Calgary 27 to 17. Saskatchewan Rough Riders lead by 10 as we get set to start the fourth quarter at Taylor Field in Regina. Calgary Stampeders using the win to good advantage in the third quarter, getting 16 points. And the Riders have used the wind effectively as well, and they have it right now. Second down and two at the Stampeder 36, Milson Jones. And he does not get the first down. He had to get across the 35 to about the 34 and a half. And I don't think he got to the 35-yard line. Dave Ridgway has kicked four field goals for John Gregory already today, but we will not see Ridgway. The Riders on third down. And a good yard, close to a yard and a half, Will Gamble. Jones will carry, tripped up, but it looked like he got what was needed. It'll depend where they spot the football. If he's to the Calgary 34, he will have the first down. Well, in this situation, and many times, we've seen Milton Jones take that handoff and bounce it outside. This time, there's no fooling around. See a great job by Brian Ilbrum trying to get out, diving out to get something on that linebacker to slow him down. But I was saying, though, Milton Jones wasn't going to play around. He was going to hit up in there and get that yard and a half. And he got it. He got the Riders a first down at the Calgary 34. Burgess getting away from some strong Calgary pressure. And then he's hit late. The Stampeders take a silly penalty after forcing Burgess to run for his life and lose a couple of yards. 74 Calgary. Boy, you, you talk about a play that or a player that becomes undisciplined in a situation mitchell price has had a very strong game there was no need at all to give burgess that extra shove i mean they had him out of bounds there was no question that he wasn't going to turn back in he's flushed out kent warnock number 93 puts a pretty good chase in little little slow down and shuffle there and throws warnock off see burgess is out of bounds that's nuts very costly to the Stampeders. It puts the ball in the Calgary 18 for the Riders. McCray carrying. 
And he's still going. McCray gets to the 16. And he did that entirely on his own. It looked like he'd lose a couple. He winds up gaining a couple. You now we're seeing Landry with the same type of play that he showed us as an Argonaut. You see, he gets through there. He doesn't make the tackle. Before, pretty good chance that he'd wrap McCray up and take him down. But let's take nothing away from Tim McCray. Great hustle to get back upfield and make something out of absolutely nothing. Second down and seven. Rough Riders at the Calgary 16. Burgess for Narcisi has it at the four, knocked out of bounds at the three yard line. Burgess showing us some pinpoint passing right here. There's not a lot of room down on the sideline. The Tom Burgess that we saw earlier on in the season when he was number one. I think we're seeing a little bit of that right now. Burgess took over in the first quarter when Ken Austin was injured. Austin will have arthroscopic surgery tomorrow on his knee. First and goal riders, Calgary free. Saskatchewan with a 10-point lead. Put themselves in a nice position if they can score here. Burgess faking and hits Bobby Jurison for the touchdown. This was an outstanding catch, play action. Milson Jones picks up the linebacker. That's a, that's a wide receiver type of catch. Look over the shoulder with that big mask on, cradle it. Nice soft hands, all taped up. That's great stuff. Well, when you see a lineman score, it's usually a wide open situation where the ball is just dumped into him. But Jurison actually had to run a pattern, ran it well. Good pass, nice touchdown. Riders are now up 34-17. This is a Foster's Lager telecast on the Canadian Football Network. Bobby Jurison has had on the defensive line of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and now he contributes on offense, catching a three-yard touchdown pass from Tom Burgess. 17 points, Saskatchewan lead as McVeigh drops the kickoff, picks it up, and then is stopped at the 20-yard line. Rashevic leading the tacklers downfield for Saskatchewan. Ah, uh, the old style of football, the two-way player. Play defense and offense, tight end at the bottom of the screen. He releases, almost like he's going to drive block, then goes to the corner. Darcy Kopp recognizes it, comes across, but not in time. Nice little touch on the ball there. <laughs> Second touchdown pass of the game for Tom Burgess, who has also scored a touchdown himself. Well, now he's on the telephone. Trying to improve on those numbers, percentage-wise, not very good, but the results have been good. Eric Kramer wanting to set up a screen to Andy McVay, but Jurison and Joe Fuller had both reacted well to it. And Kramer looked like he just got rid of the ball into the turf to save the loss. A wise move. When you get used to seeing that defensive line come at you so hard, as Bobby Jurison has, he just simply came off the ball and, and hooked up with the offensive lineman. And that's what takes it away. 34-17 Saskatchewan. We have 11.30 left in the game, in the fourth quarter, that is. Stampeders working into the wind now in the fourth quarter. Kramer throws for McVeigh, who was open, but he threw it behind him up at the 30-yard line. Kramer backpedaling and just couldn't get anything on the ball, it seemed. I think he also wanted to throw it a little bit more quickly than he did, backpedaling off. McVeigh was open right from the crossing the line of scrimmage. So Glenn Harper will kick into the wind, something that Terry Baker did often in the third quarter. Harper now will confront it in the fourth. And Harper does not get much distance. Richie Hall bobbles the ball and then kicks it out of bounds and flags are down, I think, for no yards against Calgary. Saskatchewan figures to have the football rather deep in Stampeder territory when all this is sorted out. They rolled it went out of bounds at the Calgary 32-yard line. No yards. 
Challenging number 44. First down, Saskatchewan. Joe DeForest gets another no yard penalty, Neil. Well, it's something where you get in the film room and next week and look at it, and when if the situation does present itself again where they have to play and kick into a win like this, he just has to temper some of that enthusiasm and come down under better control. Riders at the Stampeder, 22. First and 10. Narcisse wide right. McDonald splits left. And Tom Burgess wants to throw. And does for Fairholm, knocked away by Derek Taylor. Good defensive play by Derek Taylor. Stan Peters brings some extra people to the wide side of the field. You see the, the, the riders adjust. So their man coverage downfield, and Taylor has the inside position on Fairholm right there, and then just accelerates when he sees the ball about to get into Fairholm's hands. Second down and 10 riders. Calgary 22 yard line, 10 and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Burgess looking for Narcisse deep in the end zone. There's a flag down as the ball was overthrown. There's a penalty flag and it's holding against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Holding, 44 Saskatchewan, he's fine. Good job. Roger Alday, who turned 35 years of age this week in his 13th year with the Riders. Playing in his 194th consecutive game at left guard. And really may be the, the one rider that is the long spell or dry spell as far as not seeing the playoffs. Mm -hmm. He's the one. He's had a long wait. Ridgeway from the 29-yard line is good. His fifth field goal of the game. And the Rough Riders expand on their lead. It's now 37 to 17 over the Calgary Stampeders. Bag asked if he'd seen everything in his 13 careers years. He said, I thought so until I'd met Milson Jones. <laughs> well, you'll have to expand on that for us. Here's a throw from Kramer that's complete up to the 50 yard line to Emmanuel Tolbert to the 51, a 16 yard Stampeder game. Uh, what he meant by that was Milson Jones is so laid back and so relaxed off the field. He just, he's never experienced that. He said, but once he gets on the field, he's all busy. Emmanuel Tolbert has been a bright spot for the Stampeders again today. As Kramer has Jurison after him, gets the ball away, but short of Petros is Bobby Jurison and James Curry. Curry's had a good game. Both hit Eric Kramer. Well, you know, you can see Kramer drop back and try to make his read, and he has that running back that he was trying to throw to the bottom side of the field, but he's got to make that read a little bit more quickly. See, Petros, check the linebackers and go. Now that ball should be there now. He has to wait that much longer. He takes a shot. And a good hard shot. Kramer is taking a pounding today, but he's still in there. Second and ten. Here comes the pressure, and he gets it away, but it's low and no good intended for Tolbert. That time, Kramer did a good job, Neil, with Eddie Lowe blitzing, but he threw a little bit low. <laughs> you can't use that word anymore today. I'm sorry. Which word's that? Low. Oh. Okay. Well, he did a good job reacting to the pressure is what I meant. And didn't throw the ball very well. He didn't throw it high enough. <laughs> Glenn Harper will punt into the win. Third down and 10. Sam Peters at their 50. They're down by 20 points with nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And they're going into the win, which makes their task that much more difficult. As this punt is just pushed back upfield. And a no yards. Fly comes down as Joel Fuller picks the ball up. Sam Peters have been hit with no yards penalties a number of times today. No infraction on the rule. Bounce back. First down to Saskatchewan. Ah, they waved that one off. Well, our next game on the Canadian Football Network is next Sunday. The Stampeders back at home. They'll play the Edmonton Eskimos and the Blackouts will be lifted. Stamps with four games after today have two of them against Edmonton. Burgess and the Riders from their 51-yard line. 
And off to Denny Ferdinand. Hasn't carried the ball much today. Tried to move to his right. And ran into Laird. And puts him down for a loss of a yard or two. That sprint draw situation. Stu Laird just reading his keys coming down the line. The trail just stands perfectly still. Burgess keeps going, slides the ball, and never watch Laird come down from the backside. Is Ferdinand a good shot? Laird's had an outstanding game. Has he ever? That'll be second down and 11 for the Riders at their 50-yard line. Burgess for Elgard, he's open, and he gets away and he'll score. I said earlier, sometimes you gamble and you win and lose. See Cop moving to the left. McCrary's coming in late from that side. Darcy Cop moves over late to try to disguise the blitz of McCrary. Having to go just a little bit late, takes some of the steam off his covering ability, and Elgard uses that to his advantage, gets to the side and catches it, and outruns everyone. That was a 60-yard play. Burgess to Elgard, the third touchdown pass of the day for Tom Burgess. And the Ridgeway convert puts the Riders ahead of Calgary 44 to 17. Talk about Saskatchewan players who've had big years. Neil, this man right here, Ray Elgard, has been right up there. Well, earlier on in the year, Jeff Fairholm was the, the talk of the town, how he came into the league and wasn't playing like a rookie and doing all the things that veteran players were doing, and he was doing that. But everyone was forgetting that Ray Elgard also lined up as a slot back on the other side and really forgot for a while how good he can be and how much of a game buster. And he's proven it, especially at BC Place just a couple of weeks ago. They've got an outstanding pair of slot backs. And with three catches today, Elgard now has 301 pass receptions in his career, which moves him past George Reed and into third place on the all-time rider reception list. Now, you wouldn't have thought that George Reed caught 300 passes, but he did, in addition to all those yards he rushed for. A lot of little swing passes and screens that George Reed was able to turn into big games. Mike Sorosko back to return this kickoff by Dave Ridgeway. And a nice run by Soroska. He gets it to the 41-yard line, and there's an exchange after the tackle by a couple of players as Eric Kramer comes out to see if the Stamps can get their offense clicking before the afternoon is through. And it's been a long afternoon for Eric Kramer, as those numbers would tell you, in his first CFL start. But as they say, he will have learned a lot today. <laughs> Well, he better learn something because, as you said, he has to go against the Eskimos next week and then once again. And uh, that won't be much fun. And I'm not sure. that It might be Leo Blanchard on the ground being attended to by Pat Clayton. Talked about that game that the Stampeders will play at home to Edmonton next Sunday, which we'll have on CFN. They then play in Ottawa, host Saskatchewan, and then play in Edmonton to close out the season. And there's a look at the lineup of games that the teams uh, battling for third place have coming up. Neither one of them have a walk. Both of them have to face Edmonton. The Riders could push their record to 9-5. and five. The last time Saskatchewan won nine games was 1981. Joe Faragelli was the coach, but they did not make the playoffs. And that battle for first place is the teams that, or what the, who the teams are going to meet. And the Eskimos do play Winnipeg tomorrow before their final four, two with Calgary and two with BC. So it will be a very interesting final four weeks of the CFL season as Leo Blanchard is able to leave under his own power. The man who Larry Kaharit says is the final part of the puzzle to stabilize that offensive line for the Stampeders acquired from the BC Lions. What a gratifying day it's been for Burgess. Getting a rare chance to play and responding pretty well. Kramer throws for Christensen, who nearly made a terrific catch at the Ryder 50-yard line. A 
And you might have heard Blanchard say, I got hit in the top of the head. Looking a little woozy. 7.20 left in the fourth quarter. Riders 44. Sam Peters 17. Calgary second and 10 from their 40. And the pass intended for Willis, but it was behind him as Kramer again took a hard shot in getting the football away. And once again, we see him getting up. This time it's taking a little bit longer. I think it, the pounding is finally getting to him. He wanted an opportunity to start for this football team. I don't think he believes it was going to be this tough. But when you go with him, and I think we have to consider him a rookie to the CFL anyway, though he has some experience in the NFL. It's a different football game. I think the Riders have given him a lesson today on how different it can be as far as looks, blitzes, and different situations by the defense. Glenn Harper on third down and 10, standing back at his 25-yard line. Under seven minutes to go now in the fourth quarter. Harper goes up to get the snap and then gets a poor kick away. Harper hustling down to get it, but Richie Hall beats him to it at the Stampeder 48-yard line. 6.50 to go. Fourth quarter at Taylor Field in Regina. Riders in charge. Eric Kramer will know he was in a game when he wakes up tomorrow morning. And that look with his eyes closing kind of tells it all. Carl Fodor is going to come in the next time the Stampeders have the ball and give Kramer some badly needed relief. <laughs> but he's Olympics. really looking forward to that, isn't he? He's taking a beating as Kramer today. Ferdinand carrying on first down, and he fights for eight yards. Six and a half minutes left. We're in the fourth quarter at Taylor Field in Regina. Bob Irving and Neil Lumsden. The Riders leading the Stampeders 44 to 17. Saskatchewan getting even for a 48 to 10 loss they took in Calgary earlier in the year. Leo Blanchard, as you can see, with that ice pack on his back part of the neck and between the shoulder pads is diagnosed as a sprained neck. Doug Landry is down. Well, we talk often about the Riders and the fact that they haven't made the playoffs since 1976. That year, they were 11-5 and five and finished first and lost the Grey Cup game to Ottawa, 23-20. They were then 8-8 eight and eight in 77 as they kind of held on with a veteran team, an aging team, and then it was downhill. Nine losing seasons out of 10 and seven last place finishes. But this year, they are back. The Riders are back. After the game today, we will select our Foster's most valuable player. And we'll have a chat with that individual. It will come from the Saskatchewan side of the field. And there are some candidates. Tom Burgess has had a pretty good day. Ray Elgard, consistent as always. Dave Ridgeway, five field goals. and. The rider defense, you can go up and down the line. So we've discussed about the new artificial turf called Omni Turf here at Taylor Field. You know, what's interesting about this is all the lines, the logo you're looking at, the CFL helmet, is not painted on. It comes in the material of the turf. So it's, it's all one piece. Over time, the extra paint won't build up. It won't become slippery. And I think it's just a great idea if you've got to play on artificial turf like you see here. And that's just white AstroTurf or white Omni Turf. Good idea. Yeah, it's a, it's a unique system of putting the numbers on, but you're right, Neil. It uh, saves the guys who paint the lines and the numbers a little work. Denny Ferdinand on second and a couple, and he's uh, selling out still. He gains three or four yards and gets the statue on a first down. Ferdinand hasn't carried the ball very often today, and he doesn't want to pass up his chance to do something with it. Oh, no, you get excited. And the, the option that the riders have, as everyone knows, is the four running backs. Jones, McCrave, Denny Ferdinand, and David Conrad is they interchangeable, just like parts of the puzzle. And they feel each one of them gives them add a different dimension to the offense. A field level look with some field level sound. And Burgess completes it to Narcisse at the Stampeder 20 yard line. Once again, Burgess hooking up near the sidelines, a very exact type of pass. 
Narcisse coming back and giving Burgess a good target. I think we're seeing Burgess, too, get into his rhythm a little bit. It's been a while since he's played, and so John Gregory doesn't like to see any of his quarterbacks, especially Austin, go down with an injury. I'm sure it's pleased to see Burgess come along. Narcisse has caught four passes for 57 yards, and Burgess is going to throw again. And he has Fairholm in the end zone, but Fairholm is not able to get worked around in a position where he can make a real good effort at the football. Well, the key to a successful football team, according to John Gregory, is as a coach make a decision, or as a coaching staff make the decision as the players you think can play that you can win with and stay with them because it isn't something that happens overnight. He made that commitment to the franchise last year. Bill Baker did the same, and it has paid off for him. The Riders are second and ten at the Calgary. Twenty-four and a half minutes to go. Fourth quarter. Saskatchewan ahead by 27 points. Ferdinand carries, and he'll gain a yard down to the 19, and that'll bring on Dave Ridgeway and the field goal team. You know, I think a key part of this season for Gregory and the Riders, Neil, was they got off to that 3-0 start, and then they lost four out of five games, and we're four and four after eight games. We see Doug Landry back in the game, and we're happy to see him back. But even though they lost four out of five, they didn't do anything rash. They stayed with the people they felt were good enough, and they've been proven right. The only part of their game or players on the field that have really gone through a revolving door situation have been receivers. But that's been because of injury. James Hood was brought in. He got injured. He's back out. Narcisse and McDonald are the guys that they wanted to start the season with that they had just for a short time last year, but they couldn't get them healthy at the same time. Now, the last few games, they do. And that continuity and consistency in the receiver spot makes the quarterback spot an awful lot easier. Dave Ridgeway has kicked five field goals today. And he will try for number six from the 26-yard line. Suter puts it down. Ridgeway puts it up. But it's no good. Ridgeway missing from the 26-yard line with the wind, shaking his head. He can't believe it, and neither can we, quite frankly. Well, the work that Ridgeway puts in in practice, I, I still believe he's laboring a little bit from a sore back. Of course, that's not an excuse the reason to the reason he missed the field goal. It just seems like he's an awful lot stiffer. Well, if you're going to miss, I guess you should miss with your team leading. 44-17 and about four minutes to go. It's now 45-17. Carl Fodor takes over from Eric Kramer. And his first play of the game is a pass. That is no good and Fodor found out very quickly what Kramer went through for the entire game. I'm looking at Fodor's rib pads and I don't know if they're big enough but if it hasn't been Lewis it's been Curry Jurison Goldsmith Clausen I mean they've all had a shot at the Stampeder yeah, quarterback today haven't they that kick by Ridgeway struck the upright and that's why the Stampeders are at the 25 yard line and there is no point for the riders so it remains at 44 17 what are throwing and it's no good Joe Fuller moving into take a shot at the interception but the ball was high enough that he couldn't get it neither could the intended receiver Jay Christensen the effects of this game on Ken Ford as we said earlier coming back off a dislocated elbow just the contact plain and simple is what will make it swell <laughs> rightfully so so they're going to put some ice on it give him a break because they can't afford to lose him in the stretch that they're going into We'll watch Glenn Harper deliver this putt from the end zone, kicking into the wind. 3.15 to go now in the fourth quarter. And Harper does not hit it well. It bounces back upfield. It's grabbed by the Riders. Jeff Treflin, it's knocked out of his hand and sent way upfield. Stampeders want possession of the ball, claiming they are the ones who touched it and knocked it out of bounds. And the officials will discuss it. Three minutes left in the fourth quarter at Taylor Field in Regina. Saskatchewan leading Calgary 44-17. Ken Lazar, the head referee. And it looks like it is going to be Calgary football. 
This CFN game is brought to you by Foster's Logger. Moving into a first place tie in the West with the Edmonton Eskimos. Riders leading Calgary 44-17. Stan Peters, though, had the ball in their eight-yard line after forcing a fumble on a punt. Carl Fodor running and throwing no good. Intended for either Soroska or Tolbert. But the Riders were right there with the Stan Peter receivers. Yes, they were, and they were there on the back side, too, once again. Under three minutes to play, the Riders aren't backing off. I'm wondering if Karras thinks Fodor would have been better off just to tuck that ball and go with it. Well, Larry Kuharic talked about keys before the game, Neil, and he thought if his front seven could control the Riders and if his team could control Saskatchewan's front seven and their blitzing, he'd be in business. Well, they have not done a very good job against the Saskatchewan rush. And here it is again, forcing Fodor out of the pocket and into the arms of James Curry and Rick Clausen. You know, it's one thing to, to force the quarterback to run and get out of the pocket, but it's another to have the rest of the defensive line do what they're supposed to do so that he did, the quarterback runs into nothing but a green sea. And that's what the Riders have done well today. Flushed him, but had somebody there all the time to take him down when he starts to go on the move. So Glenn Harper faces the unwelcome task of kicking into the wind from his end zone. 2.25 to go. Harper, not a bad kick into the wind, but it'll bounce back his way. Richie Hall picks it up and is out of bounds at the 20-yard line of the Stampeders, and there's a penalty flag down, which may be for no yards against the Stampeders. No infraction, bounce back and rule applies. First down, Saskatchewan. Once again, head referee Ken Lazarick waves off the no yard because the ball bounced back toward the kicking team, in this case, the Stampeders. Well, Larry Harris knew the potential problem of coming into this football game with a young quarterback, hoping that it wouldn't materialize, but I think the worst has presented itself. Tom Burgess from the 20. The Riders certainly aren't there. Uh, Shutting their guns down, are they? They're going for more points as McCrary intercepts, flips it back to Landry. He takes a good pop from Mike Anderson. Of course, the Riders conscious of the point spread, I'm sure, as they try to add more. They'll play Calgary one more time. They'll have four meetings this season. Burgess is able to get up and escape. And stick that ball in there. McCrary comes up with it now, just a little flip pass to Landry. He's looking for it, but I don't think he was looking for that shot from Mike Anderson. And with that point spread in mind, again, we have to remember that earlier this year, Calgary beat the Riders 48-10. to And then Saskatchewan came back and won 24-21. Fodor sprints right on first down. He's in the end zone, gets the ball away, and almost picked off by Richie Hall, who had Colbert well covered. Garrett said he wanted to pick on the halfbacks today of the Riders' defense. I think both Fuller and Hall have presented themselves and, and really come to the challenge because they have been tested in different situations and have responded. See, even they're giving the middle linebackers those armbands as far as plays go now. Soon everybody will be wearing them. I'd like to see a kicker with one. Well, then it's a real fashion <laughs> statement if that happens. A minute 55 to go at Taylor Field in Regina. Carl Fodor hands off on a draw play to Andy McVeigh. And he has absolutely nowhere to run with the ball. Gary Lewis thought of after it. And Harper is going to have to kick again into the wind with a minute 54 remaining. Gary Lewis, kind of the unsung member of that front five but uh, consistently good game in and game out. You know, talk about Kramer making his starting debut. You can pick better teams to make your starting debut against. The Riders with that pass rush and a young quarterback at their mercy have really 
taking advantage of Kramer's lack of experience today. Fuller with a good punt by Harper. Fuller back at the Calgary 40 and then down at the 39-yard line. 36-yard kick by Harper. Crowd today at Taylor Field, 23,224. Another good turnout. They were over 28,000 for each of their last two home games. And they'll undoubtedly have a big one for their next game, which is here next Sunday against the BC Lions. Now, will Burgess put it in the air and look for more points? Yes, he will. And it's complete to Bresciani, Rob Bresciani, who's in the game, former Stampeder. And he makes a contribution. Good play, good protection. We have Bob Poley in a left tackle now. He'll be working out at some of his old teammates, but again, over the middle. Bresciani has to take a shot, but Burgess, I think, is looking sharper and sharper every time he throws a football downfield. From the Stampeder 15, Tom Burgess and the Riders first and 10, a minute 10 left on the clock. Burgess hit just as he tried to get rid of the ball. And it only traveled four or five yards. Quincy Williams got to Tom Burgess. Again, lest you think that the Riders are trying to rub it in here, they are playing the point spread, although I'm sure they don't mind putting it to Calgary either. You see Williams to the left side there working on Bob Poley. A new position for Poli, primarily a center through his career, and has played some guard. Takes some getting used to in that tackle spot, and Williams took advantage of the split and just came down hard, worked to the inside. Also very remote that Calgary could even tie Saskatchewan after today as Burgess puts it in the end zone looking for Rob Bresciani on second down. The Stamps will be 5-9 and nine after today, and the Riders 9-5, and five, four games left each. 1-0-2 to go. Fans wanting Burgess, Gregory to go for it. They started yelling go as soon as they saw Dave Ridgeway step onto the field. Ridgeway five out of seven today. Missed his last one, a short one. This try will be from the 22 yard line with Glenn Suter holding. And this time Dave Ridgeway is good and that makes it 47 to 17 Saskatchewan over Calgary six field goals today for Ridgeway he has 46 on the season that's just three short of his personal single season record and the league record is 52 which was set last year by BC's Louis Pisaglia so Ridgeway is six short of that and with four games to go you'd have to think he's a pretty good bet to break that record Fifty-eight seconds left on the clock at Taylor Field in Regina. Fans have been kind of quiet in the second half. They've grown accustomed quickly to this oh. winning again. <laughs> Are they a little bit spoiled already? <laughs> Carl Podor running on first down. Rick Clawson came across and took a rip at him. Podor was able to escape most of that. Gained nine yards. One of the first in few times that the Stampeders have been able to get outside and threaten that corner, be it on the run or the quarterback throwing. I think your description of taking a rip by Clawson is uh, best describes the way the defense has played against the offense today. McVeigh carrying on second and one. Good gain out to the 52, maybe the 53 of the Stampeders for a first down with 30 seconds left on the Taylor Field clock. Well, this kind of situation gives the Riders defense a chance to play some faces that normally wouldn't get into the game other than special teams. June Jones is in. Jeff Treflin in this, plays in the secondary. And uh, I said earlier the, the wind might be more mental than physical, but... <laughs> well, 55. shows you right there that it makes a big difference, doesn't it? 55 of today's points with the win and there have been 64 points in the game so it has really definitely been a big factor is it often it's not always sometimes you'll see where the wind doesn't play the kind of role you think it might but today it has played the role that it often does and john gregory 
will rack up his ninth win of the season. And the Riders won't lock up a playoff spot today, mathematically, but they will clinch one for all intents and purposes as the things that would have to go wrong for them not to make it now. Well, it would be a hard to imagine if all those things could go wrong. John Gregory and Larry Kuharic will meet at center field as the Riders put it to the Stampeders 47 to 17. <laughs> Big day for the Rump Riders at Taylor Field. They beat the Stampeders 47 to 17. Tom Burgess three touchdown passes. And our CFN Foster's most valuable player, Saskatchewan defensive end, Bobby Jurison. Bob, I want to talk to you first of all about your touchdown. That, that's the first of your professional career, is it not? Yeah, that's the first touchdown. The only other touchdown I had was when I was in uh, college playing tight end. Tell me about the play that you scored on. Well, it was a 54 pass, and uh, I always give the quarterbacks a hard time during practice when, you know, because they won't throw it to me. And uh, this time I was open, Tom laid the ball up for me, and uh, thank God I caught it. So that play's been in there all year on your short yardage situation. Oh, yeah. Well, I've, I've just been waiting for the opportunity to catch a ball because you can remember last year when Stu Hill beat me on a pattern similar to that, and uh, I'm kind of happy I caught it. Well, we got a look at it here. Uh, Bob Jurison won't see it, but uh, our viewers will. And it was a, a perfect throw by Burgess. And you, you were pretty well covered, Bob, on the play. Well, when I first got off the line, I don't know if I hit my guy long enough, but I got off and I, no one was around me. Then all of a sudden, I feel this guy on my back when I'm catching the ball. And uh, I'm just glad I caught the thing. Bob, tell me what the defensive plan was with a, a first-game CFL starting quarterback in there. Well, of course, with a, with a young quarterback in there coming up, and, you know, he hasn't seen the blitz. He's not used to the wide field. And I think uh, the blitz for us worked really well. As you can see, our linebackers were really into the game today and sacking the quarterback along with our free safety and halfbacks. So we had a good defensive package in the game for these guys. And I know that Coach John Gregory reminded you guys before the game that you hadn't won anything yet this season. That's right. We're not in the playoffs yet, and we still got to keep working. If we win the next five, definitely we'll be in the playoffs. That's our main goal. Bob Jarrison, thank you. He's our Foster's most valuable player, and our postgame coverage on CFN continues in a moment. Rump Riders back in a first place tie with Edmonton. The Eskimos will play in Winnipeg tomorrow. Calgary in a tough spot now as they try to make the playoffs. Here at Taylor Field, Saskatchewan beat the Riders 47-17. Our next game on CFN will be Sunday with Edmonton at Calgary.